From Up North News, I'm Pat Kreitlow. Let's unwind the week looking at uh, some of the stories that made news over the past few days. I will be joined shortly by Up North News reporter Jessica Van Egren. She has a story working on how the uh, Democrats in Wisconsin are trying to win back the enthusiasm, if not the support, of a key constituency, not just African-American voters, but African-American women, many of whom did not vote in 2016, many of whom still feel somewhat taken for granted by the party or the candidates. And so we'll talk about the story that she's working on, the people that she's talked to, and then we will talk to the chair of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, Ben Wickler, about that. The party also held its first ever virtual state convention because of the coronavirus outbreak. So we'll ask him how that went. We'll go a step further as well and ask, you know, in terms of the, the future of campaigns online, maybe not conventions themselves, but certainly voter outreach. How are things uh, much different now? Uh, how did that have to rapidly change because of the outbreak? And uh, back to talking about specific groups of voters, uh, I'm sure we'll ask him about the comments from Assembly Speaker Robin Voss uh, that a, an immigrant culture was to blame for a coronavirus outbreak and uh, what's the political strategy in that and what does it tell him for how to target voters. And then Jessica and I will talk a bit about uh, the coronavirus outbreak in terms of two new ways of tracking it, uh, not just the usual testing of people, but actually testing people who may have had it in the past and also testing wastewater to see if you can identify local outbreaks before they have a chance to really take hold. So all that and more as we unwind the week, uh, we'll start first with an interview with the state chair of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, Ben Wickler. To help us unwind the week further, we are joined by the state chair of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, Ben Wickler. Ben, nice to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much, Pat. Thanks, Jessica. Uh, we were uh, watching the virtual convention over the weekend. Obviously, it's not the ideal situation, but there are also some glimpses into the future in terms of using video and, and virtual meeting. Uh, so I'd be curious to hear that from a convention standpoint, what kind of feedback you got and uh, things that you liked and things you might do differently if you have a virtual element in the future? We got such positive feedback. I think people are just craving human connection right now. Uh, so many people have spent so much time uh, you know, in their own kind of bubbles. And even though it wouldn't have been safe to gather a thousand plus people in a packed you know, hall, which is, would have been a lot more fun, um, people really had a sense of being part of something that brought voices together from every corner of Wisconsin. Uh, we had a lot of rapid fire speeches, as anyone who was watching saw. There was a kind of united voice about confronting the legacy of systemic racism and police violence, about bringing folks together in the midst of this pandemic uh, to make a Wisconsin that works for everyone, that's inclusive of all, um, and that lifts people up. And I think that the message of unity and the message of taking racism seriously and battling against it, um, and the message of building for a brighter future and putting Joe Biden in the White House, it really came through. So I'm, I'm very pleased with it. I hope it is our last ever virtual convention, um, but it is uh, so much better than you know, either risking people's health or not having a convention. Uh, this was a, an option that combined, I think, the, the, the best of technology and, and the voices that we needed to hear. Yeah. So Ben, kind of springboarding off the virtual convention, um, obviously campaign activity now um, happens a lot online, um, and that was happening prior to the pandemic. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about things that you might be doing differently um, heading up into November and um, maybe some things that you don't want to do because you've seen they just don't work so well in the past? Yeah. So this, uh, this spring, Wisconsin became the only state and still is the only state that had a statewide general election since coronavirus hit. There have been primaries in other places. There have been congressional special elections. We actually had a statewide race against the GOP machine. Trump personally leaned into the fight, tweeting, uh, pushing his volunteers to get involved. And we trounced him. Um, it is, it is a, a testament to the work of thousands and thousands of people. Also, to the refusal of voters to have their votes suppressed. And we had always seen the spring as a dress rehearsal for the fall. So what we learned is that in this moment, there's actually a, a bigger impact to making phone calls, especially if there are local volunteer teams and county parties making calls to people in their own communities. Um, there's a, a higher connection rate. The conversations are longer and, and more textured than in normal times when you're just calling with reminders, especially when you're helping people cast absentee ballots. 
Uh, voting from home is new for most people, but it is very satisfying to make your uh, ballot count and to do something concrete now, like signing up for an absentee ballot at myvote.wi.gov. So uh, we learned about phone calls, text messages, outreach on social media, and most of all, relational organizing, which is where you actually work with people to load their personal contact lists into an app that helps them figure out who are voters who might uh, benefit from a contact from someone that they recognize. That has a huge impact on voter behavior. So uh, we're now working to scale that up in a virtual basis across the state while constantly looking at what's possible in terms of in-person um, door knocking and activity. We don't wanna put anyone's health at risk. We wanna make sure we're doing what is best for our state uh, from a, a public health perspective and from democracy's perspective. Um, this, is, this is really new for us. We've never had a summer long uh, absentee voter sign up drive. Um, but by doing that work now, we actually shrink the number of people who will need to remind to vote in person if it's safe to do so in November. And so uh, there's outsized returns to early virtual organizing in this moment. And we're taking full advantage of that. Great. So um, getting kind of, I guess, springboarding off of organizing, um, I think all of us are aware that in 2016, um, there was lots of questions as to why the African American votes didn't turn out as much as they had before. Um, people, and you just did yourself, brought it up at the convention about having to address those issues. What is the party doing? Do you see differences as, as how the state is handling that to draw those um, voters in this time? Uh, absolutely. Uh, one thing that when we've looked at the numbers from 2016, it's striking that uh, turnout in Milwaukee uh, across race was actually higher in 2016 than any previous elections other than 28 and 2012. And the biggest swing towards Trump came from smaller and rural communities across the state. About half of the swing from 2012 to 2016 was in communities of less than a thousand people. And so, um, I mean, one piece is that we are uh, massively increasing the amount of work we do in rural Wisconsin uh, to voters across race and, and tribal nations, um, but in every part of the state. And with African-American voters in particular, um, mm -hmm. I think as a party, we have to recognize that sometimes Democrats kind of show up a few weeks before election day and say, hey, it's been, it's been three years, but we want to talk to you about voting. Um, we're not doing that this time. So last summer, we worked with a group called Organizing Core 2020 to run a huge training of 29 young people, primarily people of color from Milwaukee. And they engaged hundreds of volunteers and knocked on the doors of 20,000 Milwaukeeans, about 2% of the entire population uh, of, the, of this, the county of Milwaukee um, in the summer months, people who had never heard from Democrats so far from an election uh, uh, in advance. And we kept up that organizing throughout the year, um, as well as making historic investments in African-American radio and, and Latinx targeted radio, digital and print outlets um, in our spring election, not just waiting until the fall. Um, our, we're constantly in touch with community leaders and grassroots organizations. We recognize that there are you know, different messengers have a, a different impact on different folks, uh, but our, our core commitment is to fighting and standing with people on their issues year round, um, including um, you know, we're not, we are following the lead of the young people of color leading the organizing in the wake of George Floyd's death. Um, mm -hmm. But we want folks to know that we are standing with them. And I think that, um, you know, as uh, Wade Henderson, who used to read the, lead the Leadership Council on Civil Rights, once said, if you want a friend, be a friend. And I think for the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, showing up when we're not asking people for their vote, showing up to show that we're standing with them on their issues, uh, lays the groundwork for a partnership that, that will help us going into November. Okay. You, you know, Ben, the Republicans like to wield the phrase identity politics, like it's some kind of cudgel. And uh, to, you would think that there's some virtue actually in talking to groups beyond your base. And you've identified the need first to bring some of your base back in, uh, you know, African-American, African-American women specifically, but also that rural outreach. Um, uh, I've talked uh, constantly about just these small cities, you know, the places that aren't, aren't townships with people that have communities and you want to get there and you want to talk to those folks. And yet you then have people like Assembly Speaker Robin Voss talking about the, the culture of immigrants, uh, incorrectly blaming that for a Racine County outbreak. You have the Chief Justice uh, Conservative of the state Supreme Court referring to, to meat packers getting COVID-19 as, as, you know, not regular folks. My question to you is, is, is that sounds like it would be an opportunity, uh, but maybe that's too easy a, a question. Maybe... Uh, in, in some political strategy, this is the way to 
solidify their base for 2020? Or are we, are we playing four dimensional chess that isn't necessary here? So there's a lot of layers to this. The first is that the Republican playbook for the last decade and beyond has been divide and conquer. Try to divide Wisconsinites by race and try to find an other so that an overwhelmingly white Republican electorate sees their problems as stemming from a them that they're not part of. And for the Republicans to, to position themselves as the party that's tougher on them who are causing the problems. Uh, divide and conquer uh, might be an effective political strategy for the GOP when they can pull it off and we are making sure that they can't. Uh, but it doesn't actually track with reality, the way things actually work. Uh, if you look at COVID, the, the massively uh, increased mortality and infection rates among communities of color, African-Americans and Latino Wisconsinites stem from the fact that so many people are considered essential workers and have to go to workplaces where they have to stand uh, closer together. Um, and it also stems from having structural inequalities, including in healthcare, that lead to higher rates of pre-existing conditions, which makes coronavirus far more deadly for so many Wisconsinites. So these are things that, you know, there's, there's no evidence that there are cultural differences in things like hand washing or mask wearing. There actually are differences across party in a way that Republicans need to really take a look in the mirror and think about. Uh, but the, the assertions Republicans are making are really grounded in a, uh, a divide and conquer, uh, bracelet divisive perspective that, that doesn't accord with anything from public health. This is a moment when we can lean in and stand with a cross-section of Wisconsinites across race, point out that Republicans are trying to divide us so they can pass policies that hurt all of us and benefit only those at the top. And those are messages that we've seen time and again actually do work to kind of puncture the effectiveness of, of racist dog whistling, which is so much of the, the GOP's message strategy. Um, and I think in this moment, uh, people can see through what the Republicans are trying to do. So we're going to make sure that voters know uh, where where each party stands on this kind of work, and we're going to do the work to show up for communities, uh, you know, when there's election and when there's not, uh, and and demonstrate through our actions, not just our words, where our values truly lie. All right, and and last thing, of course, you had the virtual convention, but you still have the the national convention coming up in Milwaukee, and I, I think just to tie a bow on things, people ask all the time, well, there'll still be things going on in Milwaukee. The answer of, I've always said, so you can prove me wrong here, is after what happened four years ago, there's no way Joe Biden is missing a chance to come to Wisconsin this summer. Uh, any news flash that he's not coming you want to share with us? Uh, definitely no news flash in, in a bad direction. I will say that they, um, every conversation I've had with folks involved in the convention and the Biden campaign um, demonstrate their intense focus on our state. And if heaven and earth need to be moved to make sure that the vice president comes to our state, um, it will be, barring some unforeseen act of God, this is, this is going to happen. Uh, everything else about the convention, uh, in terms of, you know, where it'll be on the spectrum from virtual to in-person, who will be where at what time, all that stuff. I know the convention team is in constant touch with health ex experts and authorities. They also have a superlative producer for the whole event. So this is going to be a successful convention that is a Wisconsin -y convention. It'll just be unlike any convention uh, that's ever been held. And uh, it'll be that way because they are looking out for the health of Wisconsinites, which is something I'm grateful for. Ben Wickler, uh, State Chair of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, thank you so much for joining us here on Up North News. Uh, wish you all the best. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much. So, Jess, besides Ben Wickler, now his first vice chair, Felicia Martin, uh, is on the Milwaukee County Board. Uh, she's very active in Milwaukee politics and the African-American community. Same can be said for Angela Lang from Block, Black Leaders Organizing for Communities. You've talked to both of these women as well about taking care of that uh, very important, pivotal voting block for mm -hmm. Wisconsin. What are they saying in terms of what the party has to do, not take for granted, message? What was their overall impression about 2020 so far? Um, I think what the biggest message that came up with, from Felicia is that in this moment, in the moment following George Floyd, we all need to really look at what the systemic problems are. And she talks about how she has toured the state from you know the north to the east, west, central, <laughs> down to the south, talking to folks over the past year. And every place she went being asked, why black voters didn't turn out in 2016 and for the Supreme Court race. And um, every time she said she was asked that, she would not respond. She said it was up to us, you know, 
white voters, the Democratic Party, to figure out the answer. And I think what she's trying to get at is that, um, like Ben said, we need to, or the party needs to, you know, be engaged, not just showing up before election season. And that's something that Angela Lang with Block echoed as well. So, you know, reflecting on what we as a state, as the Democratic Party have done for those voters in the past, looking at the disparities in the state, how we got to this point and how the party can, um, you know, engage with them and fight with them on these issues. Okay, and we will, as I mentioned in the interview, uh, most assuredly come back to other groups of voters between now and November. Uh, this one in Milwaukee is very critical, of course, but mm -hmm. um, I know very well the outreach that's being done across rural Wisconsin, um, because again, you can't just go for one more voter in Milwaukee, or the, the Republicans can't go for just one more voter in the Milwaukee suburbs. You you have to fight this all the way up to Superior and out to Kiwani and you know down to Potosi if, if you want to get this yeah. done. So we will be following all those things. Let's shift gears to, to one quick note on the coronavirus outbreak. And that's a story that you had this week about expanding the ways that we're testing for coronavirus. Uh, right now, you, you, you can test people to see if they currently have it. Uh, but now we're getting into uh, testing people who might have had it at one point, And we're, we're getting into testing the wastewater, which is uh, very interesting. But, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of answers in, in landfills and wastewater treatment plants and things. Uh, I had a journalism professor. He's, he was like, Mr. Kreitlow, the landfill is where the answers are. <laughs> and he, he's not wrong. The, the stuff that's out there can matter. So let's talk about what, what we're doing for wastewater testing and antibody testing. Yeah, so yesterday the state announced um, new partnerships with several different entities, um, including UW-Milwaukee, the DNR, the State Lab of Hygiene, um, UW-Wisconsin-Madison, and um, kind of looking at, you know, diagnostic testing, the testing that we've done so far gives us a glimpse of who's had it, you know, who has it right now. So the antibody testing um, tells us, gives us a better look at who's had it in the past. And the way they're going about this is they're partnering with the UW. They already have um, volunteers in place just for previous surveys that they've done. So those are gonna be happening in 10 counties. Can't remember the counties off the top of my head, but I know they're listed on our website. As we say, they're, they're in our story. So yeah, they're in our right story. Um, so that's cool. So they can get a bigger picture of, you know, and some of them are more rural communities where people weren't getting tested as much. So that might give us a look at, you know, you might have had low numbers, but you actually had coronavirus in the community. People just weren't um, symptomatic. And then um, the other testing form that's pretty cool and I'd actually like to learn a little bit more about in the upcoming days is, you know, they are gonna be testing the wastewater because viruses stay alive. I guess they've done this with, um, I think Hep B and something else in the past, polio. So this again is not a new thing that um, public health officials are coming up with to track this virus. This is something that they've done, you know, for 100 at least years. So, and then this is a way that they can tell um, potential surges. So if they're checking the wastewater, they start to see a spike and they know the treatment is coming from X, Y, and Z communities. They can get into those communities, start testing people and hopefully prevent, um, you know, a massive surge somewhere. So it's actually pretty cool. I mean, scientifically and all that kind of stuff. So I would kind of like to do a follow-up story on that hopefully next week, because it is, I mean, it's pretty interesting how they can do that. It does sound really interesting, Jess. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as we unwind the news for this week. From Up North News, I'm Pat Kreitlow. You can follow us online at upnorthnewswi.com. Remember the WI. Same on all your favorite social media feeds. Look up Up North News WI to follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we have a couple of daily newsletters and podcasts as well. Have a great weekend.